I'm joined today by Dr. Dangerfield. We're here to discuss an incredible new procedure that he has developed alongside his colleague, Professor Chris Coombs. So, Dr. Dangerfield, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for the invitation, Victoria. Absolutely. To start us off, in a nutshell, what is nerve grafting surgery and how have you applied it to erectile dysfunction? Nerve grafting surgery is where we take nerves from your lower limbs that are not overly important to the function of your lower limbs and place them in a way to regenerate the chemicals that initiate erectile function. So who is this procedure suitable for? I understand it can be used for men who are post prostatectomy. Are there any other case studies at this point? Yes, certainly we're about to publish a number of different cases, but it has been focused on radical prostatectomy patients, but any other surgeries that bring on erectile dysfunction, such as a TERP operation or operations for colorectal cancer, operations for bladder cancer, such as a cystectomy, we've undertaken the procedure on those patients. But the majority of patients are post-prostate cancer. Is that any surgery that has particularly affected the erection nerve surrounding the prostate? That's correct. Okay. And would that include actually radiation treatment as well? We have uh, performed the procedure on a number of radiation patients as well. And we're seeing that we don't get the results in those patients that we do in the surgical patients uh, and the area will be developed further. Fantastic. Now, what are the mechanics of this procedure? What happens when somebody's going through this? There's a little bit involved, but it's quite tolerable. We take the sural nerves, which are nerves on the sides of your calves that other surgeons have been using for nerve grafting for a long, long time. We take those out and we plug them into specific branches of the femoral nerve. That's the big nerve at uh, the top of the leg that makes you walk. And we irritate the femoral nerve in a way that new nerves are grown out. They can actually regenerate themselves. And they grow out of the femoral nerve and are guided by the graft into the penile corporal bodies. And once they've all knitted in, they release the same chemicals that brings on uh, an erection. It's fascinating. Now, what are the levels of success that you've seen so far with this procedure? We're, we're sitting at approximately about 65% and we've performed the procedure now on over 100 patients here in Australia from all states of Australia. Interestingly, we've also seen uh, success rates of about up to 55% in patients that have had non-nerve sparing. We define success as return to erectile function, strong erectile function in terms of penetration and maintenance, and it's with or without medications. If you require uh, injections on an ongoing basis, that's a failure. So all of our success rates are with or without medications, and to date, with the patients to date, about half require the use of ongoing medications. Mm, and medications, that would be the PD-5 inhibitors, your Viagra, your Sciatus, okay. Yep. Um, assuming though when patients come to you, they're not responding to those medications at all. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's all. Non-responders are who we're operating on and not when it comes to injections though. So a lot of people come to us to get off injections. So yeah, it's, it's success is with or without the PDE five inhibitors. Of course. And that would make sense because of course those PD5 inhibitors, they need some nerve function in order to work. Yes, that's right. And it's the same mechanism, the same mechanism as the medications is the same mechanism as the way our surgery works. Now, after someone has this procedure, how long do they wait before they start to see something occurring if this procedure has been successful? Yes, certainly. There is a waiting time for the nerves to grow and then knit in properly. And the average response time is somewhere between nine and 12 months, but we've had patients regain their function at six months. And also out the other end, we've had patients regain it as late as 15 months as well. So there's a bit of variability there, but the average is somewhere between nine and 12 months. And are there any factors that you have found or that you think might be affecting those different levels of success in the time until it takes to regain it. Oh, well and truly, well and truly. It's getting more predictable now that we've been going for a reasonable amount of time. Of course, young patients always heal better. Patients that we've got to earlier on, uh, and that's where we're getting these results in non-nerve sparing patients because we're operating on them earlier. 
Usually it was about the two-year mark for all patients, but we can operate earlier if you've had a non-nerve-sparing radical prostatectomy. All patients have to have a history of strong function before they've had their radical prostatectomy. And that sort of covers all the other factors like medical illnesses and the like that can affect your erection. So if you've got troubles before your radical prostatectomy, our procedure is usually not going to help you too much. So it's important to have in, uh, documented strong function beforehand. 